I'm Jason and this is Diecast Restos. In my hands is a Corgi Juniors 12C Ogle Reliance Scimitar GTE. It was produced for the Wizwheel series from 1970 to 1973. This once white casting has been smeared in black, blue and red paint in a rather unflattering fashion. They also came in a rare blue gloss or a more common light metallic blue like this good condition example here. This is how a production scimitar GTE looked, but the casting is based on the 1968 Motor Show prototype that looked like this. The main difference was the glass roof that extended over the front passenger seats. It also had headlamps that could be concealed, where the production version did not. As this casting is a replica of the prototype, I'm going to restore this model in a copper colour similar to the original design drawing. The Corgi casting is a fairly basic construct, consisting of a wire suspension piece in the uncoated metal base, a bright yellow plastic interior piece, and the large windscreen piece, which requires removal of some of that overpaint. Reliant was founded in Britain in 1935 and produced vehicles for niche markets. They are perhaps best known for their three-wheeled vehicles like the Reliant Robin. They are also known for their use of fiberglass bodies, which they adopted wholly on the Reliant Regal in 1956. In 1964, the first generation Scimitar launched. It was designed by David Ogle of Ogle Design. It had been intended for use with Daimler running gear. When Daimler didn't pick up the design, Reliant approached Ogle. It was then modified to operate on Reliant Sabre running gear. It was a two-door coupe that was initially driven by a Ford inline six and then later Ford's V6 engines. Tom Caron of Ogle was asked to design a new experimental four-seat estate car ahead of the 1968 motor show. He came up with the pillarless glass roof design seen earlier. The prototype was known as the Ogle Scimitar GTE. The shooting brake GTE used the same 3 litre Ford V6 engine as the later versions of its predecessor. The GT and the GTE ran alongside each other for two years in the Reliant lineup until 1970 when the GT was discontinued. The GTE was also known by its code SE5. The SE5A was a slightly uprated model that landed in 1972 and ran until 1975. It was superseded by the SE6 that year, which was aimed at the executive market. The SE6, SE6A and SE6B ran until 1986. A convertible GTC was also manufactured between 1980 and 1986. More often than not, you'll see scimitars fitted with aftermarket Wolf Race slot mag alloy wheels. So with my custom, I'll be fitting these 3D printed rims in that style. Now in Britain, whenever a Reliant Scimitar is mentioned, a common and overused quip would be, Princess Anne had one, you know. In fact, Queen Elizabeth's only daughter had eight Scimitars. She was given her first Scimitar GTE on her 20th birthday in 1970 by her mother and Prince Philip. Prince Philip himself drove Ogle's Triplex GTS Glazing Test Special Precursor to the Scimitar for two years in the late 60s, this experience likely aided the Royals' decision to purchase a GTE. Anyway, onto the paint. This is Tamiya's Polycarbonate PS14 Copper. I always clear coat over my work, but it is especially important with the polycarbonates. They are designed for plastic, not metal, and tend to split and crack if not sealed. So the bodywork is now painted. I then tone down the interior by painting black over the formerly yellow plastic. I believe the prototype vehicle itself had a tan interior with checkered fabric. However, I've based my black interior on the design artwork. The sole prototype is still in existence. Its bodywork was painted off-white and is owned by the family of Sir Julian Hodge. Sir Julian was chairman of Reliance at the time and purchased it for his wife. There isn't a vast sea of detailing required on this casting, aside from chrome on the rear bumper and as a base for the rear lights. Red is used for the two innermost and orange for the outermost. The front bumper forms part of the base, so no chrome is required at that end. 
As you can see, the headlight grills are cast in the closed position, so the headlamps themselves cannot be seen. The grill slats are coated in Citadel for depth though. So while I reassemble, just a note on the cast body lines. Unlike most manufacturers, corgis protrude outwards rather than having indentations to the metalwork. As such, I've not coated Citadel along these lines as it would give them a rather awkward shadow. Now here is how my wronged Reliant used to look. It has been wretchedly repainted in black, red and blue over its formerly white body. The feature window had been scuffed, scratched and overpainted. The unpainted metal base also found itself now coated. Instead of a plain, white, undetailed restoration, I wanted to give this model a bit of animation with some detailing and historical accuracy that harked back to its original design plan. So here is my take on the Ogle designs for what became the Reliant Scimitar GTE. In the bottom left are the design plans I've used as inspiration. I think the copper excels on this casting, and the yellow tint of the window piece is less noticeable alongside it. There's been some minor detailing to the door handles, rear bumper and rear lights, but the car had few exterior features due to its fiberglass body shell. Those Wolf Race mag slots really look at home on a scimitar, and I'm very pleased how they've turned out. So I hope you've enjoyed this short journey into the history of the Reliance Motor Company and the Scimitar's origins. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe and tell all your friends about the channel. Links to Instagram and Patreon and YouTube memberships are in the description. Please help out if you can. But all that leaves me to say is thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.